Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. God is good, and he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. God, we thank you, God, for another day to serve your name. Hallelujah. We entered into the last month. Got a couple more days, and we'll be out until then. We'll be ready for the last month of 2020. <laughs> God has brought us a long way. Amen. Is that a reason just to give God glory and praise? Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Our scripture this morning comes from James 1, starting at the second verse. It says, count it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be more mature and complete, not lacking anything. Hallelujah. Let's count it all joy. Wherever you are in your life, count it all joy. God knows where you are. Amen. Come on, let's go before the throne of grace. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for life. We thank you, Lord, for our health and our strength, the ability just to lift those arms and give you glory. Well, we're going to count it all joy today because, Lord, you know it's working patience in us, God. Hallelujah. Eventually, we'll lack for nothing, God. Oh, God, let patience have her perfect work inside of us, God. And God, as we lift these songs of Zion and these praises up today, wherever they might be, might be on the couch or in the bed or in the car listening, God, you touch that heart today. God, let them not their minds be renewed, God, in the name of Jesus. Anoint us afresh, God, as we serve your people today. God, as we lift your name high in all the earth, Jesus. Hallelujah, we believe that we lift your name up. You would do the drawing. God, anoint this praise team, God, to give you glory today. God, help them to sing songs that would change people's lives. Oh, Father, God, anoint these musicians, God. Yes, the skill and the ability is in their fingers, God. But God, anoint them afresh, God, that to break chains off somebody on the high-sounding cymbal, string, keyboard, and the organ, God, in the name of Jesus. God, do it for the videographers and the sound men, God, that come together, our frontline worshipers, just to serve your people, God. Thank you for the privilege. Thank you for the opportunity to see the sun and the, the clouds and the trees. We thank you, Lord. God, we thank you for the man that was standing in the place of Peter. God, anoint his tongue today. Make it like the pen of a ready writer, ready to proclaim, ready to, to lift your name up, God. Anoint him afresh from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, God. Have your way in this service. You know what your people need. And God, as we leave this place, God, we will know that we've been revived, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Another seven days. God, we need a word. We need a song. We need a praise. Lord, so have your way. Have your way. Have your way. In the matchless name of Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, get off that couch this morning and command that soul just to give God glory, honor, and praise. You can get up this morning. Come on, come on, come on, everybody. Hey, hallelujah. Woo! That's right. Yes, sir. Oh, God, we give you glory. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing it right here. Listen, I command my soul to bless the Lord. 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 I command my soul yes, to bless the Lord. Come on, say it, say it. I command my soul Hallelujah. to bless the Lord. Come on, the soul. I
Hallelujah. Bless the Lord today. I don't know about you, but sometimes I have to command my soul. I don't feel like it all the time, so I have to command my soul to bless the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, Atop. Good morning. We are so glad that you are here on this morning to worship with us. We are so delighted just to see another day that the Lord has made and be able to rejoice and enjoy this day. How about you? Amen. Aren't you glad that the Lord woke you up early this morning yes, yes, yes. in your right mind, ready to give him praise? Well, again, we thank you for joining in with us. On behalf of our pastor, Dr. Thomas Murray, we welcome you to our virtual worship service. We ask that you would um, participate with us, sing as loud as you want to because we can't hear you. <laughs> Amen. Pray when it's time to pray. Rejoice when it's time to rejoice. Say amen. Put amen in the chat box. Put hallelujah in the chat box. Yes. Share, click, tag, and share this uh, service with your family members and friends so they can be blessed on today. Um, as usual, uh, as uh, each Sunday, as members of the Christian church, we partake of communion at the end of our service, and we ask that you would prepare your communion if you have not already done so, so that you would be able to partake with us. Amen? Amen. And just a reminder, today is the last day for vouchers for the vulnerable. Just for $20, a $20 donation, you could provide a warm night stay for someone who does not have a home. $20 will get a voucher booklet that gives a person four nights stay at the shelter. So today is the last day. Pastor, have you gotten your shelter uh, vouchers for the vulnerable? Have you gotten it? Have you got it yet? I got you. I got you. Yeah. You turn yours in? Yeah, I heard that. Hey. Uh, no, you got me. <laughs> I need yours. I need you, 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 and you. All right. This is mine. This for you. Amen. I got your back. Amen. Vouchers for the vulnerable buys a, a voucher booklet that gives a homeless person four nights stay in the shelter. Please, today is the last day to give a two vouchers for the vulnerable. Amen. You can do it online, but just put in the uh, notes section that you want $20, $40, $60, how, whatever amount, the, the least you can give is $20 for vouchers for the vulnerable. Amen. Thank you so much for joining in with us today. We love you and we bless you. Amen. of the brave. ATOP salutes every veteran for their unselfish sacrifice. To those who served and those who continue to serve, we don't know you all, but we know ATOP thanks you for your service. Congratulations, ATOP, on becoming affiliated with the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. As part of the Christian Church, we have become part of a mainline Protestant Christian denomination that serves the world by spreading the gospel of Jesus through worship, outreach, mission, community service, and fighting racism. We have sister congregations around the city, the state, and across the U.S. and Canada. We are proud to partner in ministry with a denomination that is preparing the next generation for ministry. Did you know that ATOP offers virtual Sunday school for adult, middle, and high school age students? Adult Sunday school begins at 8.30 a.m. And middle and high school Sunday school begins at 9 a.m. So gather the family and join us as we study the word together. Zoom meeting IDs and passcodes are available via constant contact or by calling the church at 901-795-9677. Parents, don't forget.
forget to gather your children ages 2 to 11 for our children's Bible story time each Tuesday at 6 p.m. What a great way for your children to learn about the love of God through the lessons, miracles, trials, and triumphs learned through Bible stories. Zoom in for a fun time in the Lord. Home for the holidays is such a comforting thought, but what about those who don't have a home? In partnership with the Memphis Union Mission, the student ministry is sponsoring Vouchers for the Vulnerable. For just $20 per voucher booklet, you can give a homeless person a warm place to stay for four nights. Help us help those in need during this holiday season. Purchase a voucher booklet today. If purchasing online, please make sure you put the word voucher on the notes line so it can be credited to the right place. Hey Atop, Angel Tree is virtual this year. Each year, Anointed Temple of Praise partners with Prison Fellowship to provide gifts for children whose parents or parents are incarcerated. Due to COVID-19, Angel Tree is offering virtual participation. It's simple. Virtual tags will be made available via the online platform and the church will provide access to the congregation. You can pay directly online to sponsor each gift package, which will include a gift card, personal message from the parent, an age-appropriate gospel presentation, and an opportunity to request a Bible. Prison Fellowship sends sponsored gift packages directly to Angel Tree Kids. Yes, it's that easy. Online information will be coming soon, so stay tuned. ATOP members, mark your calendars for December 19th at 12 noon for our year-end virtual congregational meeting. We will discuss how we have progressed through this year, adopt our budget for 2021, and forecast our future. All members will be able to access the meeting via digital device or by phone. Login information will be coming your way soon. From our house to yours, have a happy Thanksgiving. Well, this is indeed the day that the Lord hath made, and we're determined to rejoice and be glad in it. It's a little cold on the outside, but we praise God for the warmth of the Holy Ghost on the inside. Somebody ought to say amen. And we're certainly grateful. Lady Kim has already welcomed you. We're certainly grateful for each of you who have tuned in to this virtual experience. And can you believe it? We're getting ready to close out the month of November. I know many of you have enjoyed a very uh, thankful uh, Thanksgiving and that you are yet preparing yourselves for what yet lies ahead. But even as we close out this month and as we prepare to enter into this season of Advent, keep in mind that we still have much to be thankful for. And even as we prepare to go to God in prayer, just ask God to search you and to try you and to see if there's anything that's unpleasing or unwanted in his eyesight and ask him to remove it that your worship might be pure, that your, your presence and your gifts might be presented in such a way that it brings glory and honor to his name. Let's bow our heads and let's humble ourselves even as we go to God in prayer. Father, we bless you and we honor you and we yet give you praise. We thank you, dear Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your long suffering toward us. Thank you, dear Lord, for waking us up right early this morning. Clothe us in our right minds. Thank you, dear Lord, for sustaining us and for keeping us and for looking beyond our faults and getting right to our needs. Thank you today that you are God of another chance and another chance and another chance and another chance. And so here we are, God. We present our tithes and our offerings. We present our gifts. We present our time and our talents. We present our worship to you. And we pray, the Lord, that you might receive our worship 
and that it might be pure even as it goes up to you. And so, God, we just thank you for this season of Thanksgiving and for this time that we prepare to enter into Advent and we prepare for your second coming. You've already promised in your word that you would never leave us nor forsake us, that you'd be with us always, even until the end. And so, God, we cling to your promises. We hold on to your word, for your promises are sure and your satisfaction is guaranteed. And we know beyond the shadow of a doubt that there's absolutely nothing too hard for you. So dear Lord, for that man or that woman, that boy or that girl who's listening, who's watching today, and who's troubled in their spirit, spirits and who's weary in their, in their minds and who's trying to figure out how things are going to work out, help them to know that you've already worked it out. For you said in your word that all things work together for good to them that love you and to those who are the called according to your purpose. So God, we thank you that you're mixing and you're mingling and you're working it out for our goods. So help us not to grow weary in this season in well-doing. For you decreed and you declared that in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So lift up, bow down heads. Encourage us along this journey. God, many are grieving and many are, are suffering from the loss of loved ones during this pandemic. The numbers are rising. The cases are going out of control. But God, you promised that you would be in control. And so we thank you, dear Lord, that you're keeping us in this season. We thank you, dear Lord, that you're continuing to supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus, our Lord. So God, hear our cries, hear our moans, hear our groans, hear our pleas even today and show yourself strong on our behalf. And so we love you today. We honor you. As a matter of fact, we love you more today than we did last night. And we thank you, dear Lord, for how you continue to bless us even in spite of ourselves. So have your way today. Shake us and wake us. Stir us, God, and allow us to feel your power in your presence like never before. So this is our prayer. This is our plea. Keep us in your care. In Jesus' name we pray. And those who love God said amen. Come on, give God some praise if you can, wherever you might be. Come on, let's sing this old song, everybody. Let's sing it. I don't know why Jesus loves me. I don't know why Jesus loves me. Hallelujah, anybody? Come on, say it. I don't know why he cares. Hallelujah. I don't know why he sacrificed his life. But oh, but I'm glad, so glad he did. Come on, sing that again, everybody. Just lift your hands and say I don't know why Jesus loved me. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know why. I don't know why he cares. I don't know why. I don't know why he sacrificed his life. But oh, but I'm glad. So glad. Come on, if you really believe that, somebody say, where was Jesus didn't love me. Say it. Where would I be if Jesus didn't love me? Aren't you glad that God loves you today? Where would I be if he didn't care? Oh, hallelujah. Where would I be if he didn't sacrifice his life? Oh, I'm glad. I'm so glad. Somebody say, oh, I'm glad. Oh, I'm glad. So glad. So glad it is. I'm glad it is. I'm glad. Oh, but I'm glad. So glad it is. God, we thank you, Lord, for loving us, to bring us this far. Hallelujah. Where will we be if Jesus didn't love me? Somebody say, I know. 
If it had not been for the grace, somebody say grace and his mercy that have been following us. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for his grace, that unmerited favor. We didn't even deserve it. While we were yet in our sins, he died for us. That's what I'm talking about. Grace. Somebody just holler back and say grace. God, we thank you, Lord, for your grace. Woo.
praise on praise. God's grace. It brought me this far. Hallelujah. You ought to stop and lift your hands at home and say, God, we thank you for your grace. It brought us this far. And it's going to lead us all the way home. Glory to God. Your grace. Come on and shout grace. Come on, thank God for his grace. For his grace and his mercy. Somebody say hallelujah. We bless the name of our God. And we do thank God for his grace today. For if it had not been for the grace of God, somebody tell me today, where would we be? Is that anybody's testimony that you thank God for his grace today? Come on and give God some thumbs up. Come on, give him some praise offerings. Come on, let the Lord know how appreciative you are for all that he's done for you. And not only all that he's done, but all that he's doing and all that he will do. For the word of the Lord decrees that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have they entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Do you love God today? Hallelujah. Thank God for his grace. Come on, somebody just type grace right there. Come on, take your time and just type grace right grace. there. Thank God for his grace. grace Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, praise team, for reminding us that we ought to take the time out to thank God for his grace. And we thank God for these musicians and for this praise team ushering us into the very presence of God. Come on, show your appreciation to them and for them by giving them a thumbs up or a clan clap or however you're going to put that in your box. Just let them know that you appreciate them leading us in worship. And we praise God for the first lady, Lady Kim. Come on, give her some thumbs up and some, some praise or whatever you do to show your appreciation for all that she continues to do around this place. We're certainly grateful for those who are yet here with us, making sure that this virtual service comes to you each Sunday. Thank you to the volunteers and those who are working behind the scenes to make it happen. Somebody say amen. Well, there's a word today found in Philippians, the first chapter, a very familiar passage of scripture, verses one through seven. I want to read for your hearing and edification and use as a backdrop for our few thoughts here today. I'm reading from the NIV version, and yours might read a little differently, but I believe we'll get the message here today. Verse 1, it says, Paul and Timothy, servants of Jesus Christ, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons, grace there it is grace and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ I thank my God every time I remember you in all of my prayers for all of you I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now verse number six being confident of this that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. In verse number seven, it is right for me to feel this way about all of you since I have you in my heart and whether I'm in chains or defending and in conf confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. Father, we bless you and we honor you. Thank you for another opportunity to call upon your name. Thank you for your word, for you've already decreed that it would not return unto your void, that it will accomplish exactly what you have intended for it to accomplish. Now, God, we pray that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord God, you are our strength. You are our redeemer. And so it's in the name of Jesus, even the risen Christ, we pray. And those who love God said, amen. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I want to talk for a few minutes here today 
from the thought and the theme, I thank God for you. I thank God for you. For those of you who were able to be, watch or view this particular worship experience on last Sunday, you know that we talked about whatever happened to thank you. That was our pre-Thanksgiving message, but today, on this last Sunday in November, I want to look at this very familiar passage of scripture in Philippians just to encourage someone and to let somebody know that I thank God for you. As we close out another month and as we begin to reflect on this year, many, uh, no doubt, confidence is low. And people all across the land and country, they are concerned about what tomorrow will bring. But know that God is still in control and that we can finish strong. I said know that God is still in control and we can finish strong. Know that in the end we win. You're a champion. There's an eagle in you. You're a winner. And the odds are turning in your favor. And this is a good time to bless the Lord. Even though it doesn't appear like it's a good time to give him praise, the word of the Lord decrees, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And so as we come to this last Sunday in the month of November 2020, I know that the official day of Thanksgiving is over. And we're eating leftovers, but we know that we don't have to wait for a day in November to roll around. Because every day is a day of thanksgiving. And as believers, we have proper perspective on our thanks. We're not going to be like the nine that, wouldn't, that didn't return to tell the Lord thank you. But we're going to be like that one that returned with gratitude and appreciation and bowed to tell the Lord thank you. Well, look at this text in Philippians. You're familiar with this first chapter. As Paul, in my opinion, he sets a pattern for thanks. And you know, I'm always amazed, Lady Kim, by the pattern that Paul sets in his epistles. Because as we read his letters, as we read the writings of Paul, we'll discover early on that he is a generous with his gratitude. He is mindful to be thankful. And when he writes to those believers whom God has placed in his life, you soon pick up, if you will, on a pattern when you're reading his writings. Paul is grateful. When he writes to the believers at Corinth, he's grateful. When he writes to the church at Ephesus, he's grateful. When he writes to the believers who are gathered at Galatia, when he writes to those who are in Coloss, when he writes to the believers at Thessalonica, he's grateful. He doesn't get very far into any of his letters without pausing, if you will, to say thank you. He thanks them, and he thanks God for them. And he's always mindful to be thankful. And you know, I would be remiss on this last Sunday in the month of November if I didn't follow in the footsteps of Paul and express my gratitude. And I'm not sure if this is even going to be a, a typical sermon. I'm not sure if it's going to be a structured word. But I do hope that someone will hear my heart as we prepare to move into this season of Advent. By the way, this is the first Sunday in Advent. Advent is a season of expectation and anticipation of the return of Christ. As we close out a season of Thanksgiving and move into a season of expectancy, we conclude this month by simply saying, I'm thankful and I thank God for you. Look at it, Philippians, this first chapter, verse number three. Paul says, I thank God every time I remember you. In other words, every time I think of you, I thank God for you. Every time you cross my mind, I thank God for you. And it's interesting because he establishes here a pattern without giving the frequency. He implies that it's regularly, yet he does not say it's every day. He does not say it's every hour. He does not say it's every moment. But he says, every time I think of you, I remember you. Every time you cross my mind, I thank God for you. 
And he, he implies here that I thank God for you in my prayers. When I talk to God, I, I talk about you. When I think about you, I talk to God about you, and I tell God, thank you. Look at verse number four. It says, in all of my prayers for you, for you all, I always pray with joy. Now, now there's a lot in that phrase right there, it, which means every time he thinks about them, it brings him joy. And then I go to God, Paul is saying, thanking God for you. I go to God and pray with that joy because I'm thinking about you. That's powerful, isn't it? Well, let me raise this question. When folks think about you, do they think, do you think it brings them joy? I say, when folks think about you, do you think it brings them joy? When folks think about you, what, what kind of attitude, what kind of idea? I just wonder is in, in their mind. Well, let me, let me do it this way. When you think about folks, what comes to your mind? If we were to start calling names and, and start going through our contact list, as you go down that list, who brings you joy? Paul says, when I think about you, it brings me joy. And I go to God, and I thank God for you. He frames this letter. He, he sets a pattern as he does with many of his other letters with the word fellowship. And so he speaks in this letter in the context of a partnership. And he connects himself with them. He talks about praying for them. He talks about thinking about them and having joy when he remembers them. And he establishes that because, because he says we're in partnership with each other. It's right there. Look at verse number five. It says, because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And as a frame, this, as you frame this text, everything he's going to say will be based upon the fact that they're in partnership with each other. He says, when I think about you, I'm filled with joy. And I thank God for you. Then he says, I do that because we're in partnership with each other. Now, 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 hear me today. This is a little preach-teach message. I don't know if I'm going to get through all of it. But hear me today. This, this, this partnership is multifaceted. If you flip over to chapter 4, and I know you're familiar with the book of Philippians, it lets us know that they are partners in giving. So whenever you see the word partnership and fellowship and communion, it all means the same word based upon the translation. Look at Philippians 4. 14 through 15, he says, yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. And then verse 15, he says of the fourth chapter, moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. He says here, if you will, that we we were partners in giving and receiving. In other words, what I see here, Lady Kim, is a, a relationship that's reciprocal. We, we minister to one another. We, we share with one another. We deposit, in, we deposit into each other's lives. It's a relationship of giving and receiving. I love you today, Lord, because, because be careful, my brother, be careful, my sister, of one-sided relationships. You've got to be careful of relationships where you're the only giver. You've got to be careful, my brother, you've got to be careful, my sister, of relationships where you're the only one driving the relationship. You're the only one pushing it forward. You're the only one who's encouraging the race relationship and bringing life to it. You're the one who keeps it going. Be careful of one-sided Relationships. I don't know who that's for, but I feel somebody just got blessed right there because where, where you're always buying and where you're always paying for everything, where you're always expected to, to take the lead, be careful, be a little leery of that kind of relationship. You know, not long ago, I downsized some of my contacts in my contact list. I was just, just clicking on people and letting people into my, my space that I didn't even know. And so I started to downsize my list 
because I went through it, and here's what I did. I made a list of all of the names where I do all of the calling. H how many friendships do you have, my brother? How many friendships do you have, my sister, where you make all the calls? And if you don't call them, you don't hear from them. Mm. Yeah, be careful of one-sided relationship because watch this. Paul says that that's not the case with ours when he's talking to the church at Philippi. It's the one of giving and receiving. Now, here's what he said. I deposit into you. I speak into your life. I teach you. I encourage you. I pray for you. But here's the key. He said, you also encourage me. You also inspire me. You pray for me. It's giving and receiving. Come on, somebody type giving and receiving. And one of the keys to this passage is that he emphasizes is their financial support of him. And the whole context of chapter 4, if you will, of Philippians is that they met his physical needs. They, they sold into his life materially as well as financially. It was giving and receiving. Come on, somebody type giving and receiving. Paul says, I thank God for you. I thank God for your care for me. And then he goes on to say, because you do, because of what you do. And now you go to verse number 19 of the fourth chapter, and he says, my God will meet all of your needs according to the riches and glory by Christ Jesus our Lord. In other words, my God shall supply all of your needs by his riches and glory. And therefore, God will meet our needs because of the partnership and the relationship that we're in. Okay, you catch that on the way home, but here it is. Be careful that you don't claim verse 19 of the fourth chapter of Philippians before you go through verse 14 through 18. In other words, here's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, as you have sown into the ministry, into the gospel, as you have planted seed, then you can expect a harvest. And as you have lived up to your responsibility to cover the ministry that God has placed you in, God will then supply your needs. Oh, somebody missed that. You didn't see that. And the reason, verse 19, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory, is not working for some of us. It's because we're not being obedient in the care of the partnership in giving and receiving in sharing of our gifts and using what God has given us to make a difference to help somebody else other than ourselves. Okay, here we go, because whenever the partnership is one-sided, it hinders, watch this, the ability for those who are in need to be blessed. The blessing of the whole house and for the partnership are released when each partner participates. Wow, I'm saying a whole mouthful. And when, when you sow in, in a particular area in the ministry of the gospel, God will bless all of your needs. Verse number 19 is giving and receiving. And then my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. You can't sit stagnant. You can't act like you don't have anything to give. You can't hold back thinking somebody else is going to do it, but you have to be an active participant in the work of ministry. Paul says the reason I can rejoice and the reason I thank God for you is because we're partners in giving. That's message point number one. But let's go back to chapter number one. Second point is this. Paul says we're partners not only in giving, but I thank God for you because we're partners in the gospel. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 5, it says, because of your partnership, there it is, in the gospel from the first day until now. Paul says, let me see if I can make this work. When I, when I think about you, I give God praise. I give praise to God for you. And I do so. Why, Paul? Because we are in partnership in the gospel. When we gather in this place, whether it's 
virtually or whether it's in-house, there ought to be an atmosphere that's created that, that, that accommodates the ministry of the Holy Ghost and releases the good news of Jesus Christ. In other words, there, there, there's something in the spirit realm. We don't see it. There's something that happens when we gather in-house or virtually. As a matter of fact, there's an atmosphere that's created when we come together and participate as partners in the gospel. And it's not just me speaking, but there are people that are praying and believe in God to do something in their situation. It might not be you. It might not be your turn this time, but somebody is praying. And, and when somebody is praying, when somebody is lifting up the name of Jesus, guess what? It creates an atmosphere that accommodates the ministry of the Holy Ghost and it releases the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ. And, and when we're on one accord, whether it's virtually or whether it's in-house, the atmospheres of such that if somebody is weighed down, if somebody is burdened, somebody had a bad day, Somebody had a bad week. Somebody had a last bad six months and a load is on your shoulder and you can't pinpoint the spot. But all you know that between you lifting him up and you saying amen, something happened. And that God comes in in a special way in the spirit realm. And if you're on one accord, he'll release that load and he'll release your cares and he'll, he'll release the anxiety and he will release you from trying to carry it by yourself because we're partners in the gospel. He says, as we have a partnership in the gospel, I thank God for you. He says, understand this. It's really not just about me, but we come together as partners and when God shows up, thank you, Holy Ghost, and we believe that our coming together will make a difference in the lives of those who come virtually or who come in-house, then here's what would happen. God will meet us, and his glory will fill the place. I said, God will meet us. He'll meet you at your house. He'll meet you in your house. He'll meet us in this house. And lives will be changed. Somebody will be delivered. Somebody will be set free and God will get the glory. Does anybody believe that today? Listen, it doesn't matter how many seats are empty in here. But when the spirit of the true and living God begins to move, the power of God begins to manifest itself whether you're in the house or not. Some of us are so busy trying to worry about how the numbers are going to be there. No, we got to worry about is God's presence going to be there. Because when God is present, then he will fill the house. It might not be this house. It might be your house. But God will fill this house because he's counting us to come together in partnership. Come on, somebody type partnership. And he says, well, two or three. Hey, there it is. Uh, gather together in his name. That's what he says. He said, I'll be right there in the midst. Come on, look at somebody who's sitting across the table from you. Go wake up somebody and say, let's come together in Jesus' name. Because where two or three are gathered together in his name, God shows up every time. So, so don't go around being distracted by what the news might be saying in this season. Because somebody needs God to do a work in their lives. Somebody needs some people to be on one accord for God to do something in their situation. Because I remember when we didn't have but a few. Come on, somebody. So it's not strange to me to preach to just four or five people. That's how I started out. Y'all better help me in here. But I, I thank God for you. Why? Because we are number one partners in giving. I thank God for you, Paul says, because we're partners in the gospel. But then he says... My third point, I thank God for you because we're partners in grace. The choir just finished singing about that grace. And it's right here in verse number seven. It says, it is right for me to feel this way about you. Since I have you in my heart, and whether I'm in chains or defending or confirming the gospel, yeah. all of you have shared in God's grace with me. We're partners in grace. 
Come on, somebody type, we're partners in grace. Not only partners in giving, not only partners in the gospel, but we are partners in God's grace. One version says we share in grace that we share in the grace that's on me. Another version say we share in God's grace. Hear this. There is favor on your life as well as mine. And it's all because the grace of God covers our lives. I said, there's favor on your life. There's favor on my life because of the grace of God that covers our lives. And that makes us partners in that grace. Oh, glory to God. I shouldn't even be here. Nothing but the wonderful grace of God that kept me. It was God's grace that sustained me. It was God that brought me. It was God who taught me. It was God who's keeping me right now. Out of all of the bad mistakes that we made, out of all of the things that we've done, it was nobody but God and God's grace that kept you. Yeah. Hear me today because we share in an amazing grace. We could spend all day in the rest of this year talking about the grace of God. I'm sure people have testimonies about how it was nothing but God's grace. We could stand here until next year talking about the grace of God and how you got somewhere you should not have been, not, not because of what you had, not because you're so good, not because you're so smart, not because you're so kind, but it was nothing but the favor of God and God's grace that was on your life. Somebody ought to say amen. And when you, you're tired, to, when you try to go go the wrong way. As a matter of fact, some of us did go the wrong way. Listen, you didn't come back just because you were so smart. You didn't get out of that trouble that you were in just because you had all of the connections. But God released grace to get you out of it. The Holy Ghost came back, came and pulled you back and brought you back in the fellowship. Listen, my brother, look this way, my sister. There is grace and there's favor on your life. That's all I got up here to say, that we are partners in the gospel of giving. We are partners in the gospel. We are partners in the gospel and we're partners in God's grace. Some of you look at your families and all you can see is grace and favor. Some of you look at the situation that God has afforded you in a season of pandemic. You can't figure it out. You couldn't go on your computer and try to find an answer. You couldn't Google it. You couldn't do none of that. God knows you can't do it with a pencil or a piece of paper because the numbers won't add up. Listen, you're not supposed to do all of what you're doing with the little that you have. You're not supposed to have the kind of money that you have coming in because you're so cute. You're not supposed to have the kind of money that you got going out. There's, that shouldn't be all that food on your table, roof over your head, clothes on your back, covering in grace and mercy and there's still milk in your refrigerator, and there's some bread, and there's some turkey, there's some mac and cheese left, nothing but God's grace. Hey, glory God. When your children tried to go the wrong way, you couldn't even kiss that and make it up. Nothing but God's grace that kept them out of the penitentiary. As a matter of fact, you could have been in the penitentiary to yourself, but it's because... Of God's grace. When was the last time you gave God some praise for his grace? Ah, you ought to go ahead and give him some praise right now. And thank God for his grace. Because hear me today, there were people you grew up with. And guess what? They're no longer here. But look at you. You're clothed in your right mind. You got a decent job. Got an excellent church that you attended. Got a few dollars in your pocket. Got a nice home that you go to. You're driving a real nice car. You can't give him praise. The Bible said if you don't praise him, hey, if you don't open your mouth, if you don't magnify him, he said, I got some rocks somewhere that'll cry out. Paul says we, we share in grace. That's why I thank God for you. Why? Because we're partners in giving. We're partners in the gospel, and we're partners in grace. And I just want to praise God for that. That's all I got up here to say. I just want to praise God for his grace. 
I know this is the start of Advent and that we're moving into a new season and a new realm. Expectations are high. But guess what? We have great expectations on the horizon because of God's grace. So I dare you to just take a few minutes of five seconds and, and just think about three people in your life and say, may the grace of God be with you and may the grace of God cover you. Come on, speak grace over somebody. They might not even be present in the room with you, but that name is coming to your mind. Grace on your family. Grace on your business. Grace on your job. Grace on your mind so that you don't lose your natural mind. Grace. Somebody type grace. Yeah, God's grace. Speak grace in the place that you are right now. Speak grace, if you will, over your family. Thank God for keeping you. Thank God for their lives. I, I release grace and favor over my kids, over our kids. I release grace and favor over ATOP and the ATOP church family. I release grace and favor because God has been that good. Because of this partnership, I have a prophetic persuasion. Paul speaks in verse number four, and I'm closing, and all of my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. That's what he said. And then verse number six, and being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in us will complete it, carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. And I pray with confidence today. I'm confident in this. I'm persuaded of this. I have no doubt in my mind. I'm sure about this. That if God started the work, he's going to finish it. I'm confident. I'm settled on this. God began something in you. It's divine work. And he never leaves a job unfinished. Listen, there's a work that needs to happen. Even in pandemic, there's a work that still has to go forth. He's working on you. He's working on me. He's working on somebody even in your house. God doesn't stop working just because of a pandemic, but he continues to work. He's shifting and he's moving and he's making a way. And God, we pray, will help us even as we move forward without fear and know beyond the shadow of a doubt that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus our Lord and that we too shall overcome, we too shall have victory on the other side of this. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Two things keep me going, your prayers for me and the Holy Ghost in me. I'm surrounded and I feel it every day and I'm lifted by those two things. Your prayers for me and the Holy Ghost in me. And it's with confidence that I know whatever happens, God's got it in his view. I was telling somebody this morning, bind the spirit of fear and of scariness and know that God's got this. Don't ever let anything get between you and God because whenever that happens, that thing that you're letting get between you and God is closer to God than you are. And just as you prayed for me, I need your prayers. And I pray for you every day that God will give you what you need in order to be sustained in this season. Lady Kim and I, we're lifting you up all the time and know that God's got us and we're in partnership together. And I thank God for you because we're partners in giving, we're partners in the gospel, and we're partners in God's grace. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We honor you and we yet give you praise. Thank you for your word that brings clarity to our situation and perspective and what you would have for us. Perspective on our thankfulness. 
because truly we have much to be thankful for. And so God, we pray that you will cover and keep us, that you will continue to order our steps and lead us in the way in which you would have us to go. And we decree and we declare even today that no weapon that's formed against us shall be able to prosper. So we put faith over fear. And we walk in boldness and confidence that he who has begun a good work in us is able to bring it to a flourish and finish. So that man or that woman, that boy or that girl, encourage their hearts even today and know that we thank God for them and they ought to thank God for us. So we love you because we're in partnership together. In Jesus' name we pray. And those who love God said amen. Can you give God some praise? Can you show your appreciation even today? So even as we close out this message and as we continue to move through this service of praise, each time the word of God goes forth, we don't hesitate or even think about we ought to, should we extend an invitation or not. Because there may be someone even today virtually who wants to come in an attitude of surrender. And the word of the Lord says, whosoever will, let him or her come, and I will in no wise cast out. So if there's a man, woman, boy, or girl who wants to come in an attitude of surrender, go ahead and type it right there in the box. And I tell you, God's going to do something powerful in your situation because you're covered by his grace. God's going to open some doors that no man can shut. He's going to shut some doors that no man can shut you're covered by his grace and we're partners in the gospel and we're partners in giving so if you want to accept him as Lord and Savior just type it right there Lady Kim is on standby and we're going to contact you in the next 15 minutes if you say pastor I just want to rededicate my life here it is the last Sunday in November getting ready to go into December and in a few more weeks we'll be closing out this year I don't want to wait pastor until watch night. I don't want to wait till the first of the year to rededicate my life. If that's you, go ahead and type it in the box. Pastor, I want to rededicate my life. And I declare that God's going to do something special in your situation. He's going to put you on the road where you're in partnership. And God's going to extend your situation beyond your wildest dreams. Come on, Elder, lead us if you will. The lifting of the hand, and that's a lifting of the heart. Oh, that's a lifting of the eyes beyond the hill where I. There's a lifting. There's a lifting of the heart. Come on, hallelujah. There's a lifting of the hearts. Hallelujah. There's a lifting of the heart. There is a lifting of the eyes.
Come on and tell the Lord thank you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on and shout right there in your room. Tell the Lord thank you. Because we realize where our help comes from. All of our help. All of our help comes from the Lord. We realize. Hey. in your money. It's not in your bank account. It's not in your relationship. But your help comes from God. In Him we live, move, and have our being. Tell the Lord thank you. I realize where my help Yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Glory, God. Bless your name, Jesus. We honor you today. Because we realize where our help comes from. Is that anybody's testimony today? That you realize it's not by power, nor is it by might, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. And I'll bring it to pass. Thank you, Lord. Well, even as we prepare to go down from this place, we realize where our help comes from. And we praise God even today. And so as we prepare to give, you will see information on the screen for those of you who are watching. If you haven't given already, we hope that you will uh, act accordingly. And we're certainly grateful even as we are closing out another month for your continued support of ministry we're partners in giving it's a giving and receiving and when we are reciprocal in our giving and receiving something powerful happens in ministry you have something to give and so give today as God has prospered as God has blessed and I'm a living witness today that you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try for the more you give more he'll give to you. So just keep on giving even today because it's really true. You can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. If there are those here in the sanctuary that want to give, you can bring your gifts at this time and we'll receive those. Lady Kim, will you receive these gifts as they come? Thank you so very much for your continued support, for your willingness to share those you can place it right there on the altar thank you so much thank you so much god bless you bless you today thank you hallelujah tiffany will you take this back to them okay I like that song. Especially when y'all get to that chorus and y'all start saying, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a lifting. Let me pray. Let me pray. Come on in. We lift up our eyes. There's a lifting. Was I, was I on? Was you I was, on? was right on the dial. All right. <laughs> we lift up our hearts. Let's pray. Father, we bless you, we honor you, and we thank you for these gifts. The givers, may it be a seed and fertile soil into this ministry, and may it be as real on this earth as it already is in heaven. Help us to continue to walk in your grace and your goodness and fulfill the ministry that you have assigned to this place. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said amen. What a powerful word from the Lord on today. I thank God for you. 
we thank God for you. I thank God for you. For your faithfulness, for your love, for just being a part of the ATOP family. I thank God for you. As we come to the close of this service, we want to commemorate one of the ordinances of the church that Jesus himself instituted, and that is the Last Supper or Communion. Pastor talked about today that we're partners in giving, we're partners in the gospel, and we're partners in grace. And it's all because of what Jesus did on the cross that we can partner together in those three things. Why? Because Jesus gave us the gospel. His life was the gospel. And through the gospel, we learn how to give. Give of ourselves, give of our time, our talents, our resources, and our tithes. And because Jesus gave us the gospel, because he taught us to give unselfishly, because he gave first, his grace is extended to all of us. So as we think about what Jesus did on the cross over 2,000 years ago, we want to take this opportunity to remember how it all started. When Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples, on the table there was bread and there was wine. Following their meal, Jesus took the cup. He lifted it up and he said, this cup represents the blood which is shed for the remission of sin. As often as you gather yourselves together, do this in remembrance of me. In like manner on the table there was bread. He broke the bread and after giving thanks, he said, this bread is a symbol of my body, which will be broken for you. As often as you gather yourselves together, this do in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. Let us drink together. Precious Jesus, we love you today. We thank you for your unselfish act of giving. We thank you for your unselfish act of giving us the gospel to share with others. We thank you for your unselfish act of giving us grace, your grace abundantly, something we don't deserve but that you give freely. We love you and we thank you and we honor you for giving your life on the cross that we may have life everlasting. And for this, God, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise on today. Amen for an awesome word. Amen. And for a powerful word and for you tuning in on today, we just thank God for you. Just to lift up a few announcements. Don't forget that today, uh, again, is the last day to uh, do the vouchers for the vulnerable. For $20, you can um, give four nights of shelter to a homeless person through the Memphis Union Mission. And it's not only a shelter for men, but they also do vouchers for women and children shelters also. So please give uh, $20 to vouchers for the vulnerable. You can drop it in the secure mailbox here at the church and we'll receive that or you can do it online. Again, just put vouchers in the notes section so it can be credited to the right place. The youth and um, children and youth will be participating in Secret Santa Saturday on December the 12th for youth and uh, children ages six to, 6 to 15 years old. It's $10. 
15 and up, it's $15. So if you are interested in your child or children participating in the Secret Santa, uh, please call Sister Erin Jethro or uh, call the church office so we can give you Sister Erin's telephone number so they can participate in the Secret Santa Saturday. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then please lift up uh, all of our family members that are on the sick and shut-in list. We want to add to the sick and shut-in list Brother Roy Carter, who had a successful transplant on last week. He's recovering well. We thank God uh, for God's healing hand of mercy on Brother Roy Carter. Uh, lift up Sister Theron C. Lift up uh, Brother Robert Jefferson, who is home from the hospital. Lift up Sister Yolanda Jefferson. And when I was looking online uh, during the service, Sister Lena Jackson also asked for prayer as she's in the hospital. So lift up Sister Lena Jackson. Also lift up the family of our beloved church member, Georgiana Kirkling. Georgiana Kirkling went, uh, made her transition to be with the Lord on Thanksgiving Day. So let us lift up the family of Sister Georgiana Kirkland. Also lift up Brother Charles Peck and the loss of his aunt and uncle. That funeral will be this coming Saturday at 11 a.m. at Brown Baptist Church. Amen. We're going to lift up those families mightily in our prayers. Don't forget Bible study on tomorrow and on Wednesday. Tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock p.m. And then on Wednesday at 12 noon via conference call. We love you. We bless you. And thank you for tuning in today. Amen. Thank you, Lady Kim. And thank each of you. And we certainly hope that you will have a, a God-filled day today, even as you make your way. Let us have and receive the final benediction and prayer. God, we bless you. We honor you. Thank you for your spirit's abiding presence in our lives. May that same spirit abide, abide to fulfill, and fulfill to overflow. So we give you praise in advance. Now God, send us forth from this place, empowered to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. And those who love God said amen. God bless you. Till next time, be blessed. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There is Bye. Hey.